fucking business relationships, one connection at a time. Thanks for joining me today. If you are anything about communicating, that means you use your mouth to talk to other people. You're going to love our show today. I have with us no other than award winner, BBC national, multinational, global entity who's on top of her communication game. She's been in the broadcast journalism space and she knows exactly what she's doing when it comes to communicating. So she is writing a book right now. I wanna welcome her to the show. Nima El Abu Warde, it's so nice to have you here with us. She is the owner of this, of course, brilliant communicators inside. And if you see it there, the brilliant communicator.com is where we can find you. I'm so glad you're here today. Thanks for joining us. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. And you know, I love on this space, we like have an opportunity to talk to people that are all doing the same thing when it comes to helping people really drive value and communicate in the best possible way. And that's all that you're doing is speaking about and what you do professionally. Tell me a little bit more about how you got into this. Is this something you've always wanted to do? Uh, so I'm writing a book because I want more people to know what I know, which is that there's a direct line between how well you communicate and how well your life turns out. So whether you're a funder and you need the money, whether you need your partner to do something for you or your teenage child, if you are able to get buy-in from that person and get the yes that you're after, wow, life is so much better. And I want people to reflect on this. How would life be different if you were a better communicator, if you could get the yes that you're after? Uh, so yeah, I've always been interested in this kind of thing, like how the brain works, what makes people make certain decisions, pay attention to certain things and not other things. And it's been woven throughout everything that I've done. So, for example, I used to have a column with The National. Uh, I used to have a column with Forbes Arabia. And I started something about money and life because it's all about behavior. And it's all about what you want from life. And the glue that brings it all together, I mean, this is the thing about people. I think we complicate things, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to do all these other things. Wait a minute. At the center of everything is how I communicate, how you communicate, how we get across the idea in our head and what we need, want, and do. And it's stuff nobody teaches us. Absolutely. There's no doubt. Well, I can't tell you, and I'm sure we probably share this pain where people expect others to perform or expect things to come from other their outside environment whether it be personal relationships whether it be a professional environment where people are just unhappy with their own expectations but yet they've never communicated and i always say like i can't read your mind tell me what you're thinking tell me what you need we do this in a parenting role we do you know i wish it was more prevalent in the work environment you must see this all the time these are problems yeah. that people can prevent right so it's really interesting because, for example, I was uh, I spoke to a CEO uh, a few months ago. I have media trained the top executives at that company and done various communication media style training with them. And, and reflecting on everything, I, I realized, wait a minute, you know, the common thing that everybody struggles with is, OK, what is it that I want to be the go to person for? What is it I want to be the go to company for? What is it that I want to be known for? Right. And how do I get across what I know and do in a way that gets the right people coming to me. But also, how do I get across what I need and want so that I don't break, so that I can sustain my version of success, so I can build the systems and the structure that keep me sane and safe, right? And uh, I was talking to the CEO and I was saying, you know, when I, upon reflection, I believe that everybody needs the fundamental building blocks of how to communicate effectively. And it doesn't matter what role you're in or what silo you're in, sales, marketing, the science and tech, it doesn't matter. Because you need to be able to get an idea out of your head and into somebody else's head. Otherwise, nothing happens, right? Think about this. So the point is that this CEO, and it's not his fault, he said, no, this is not right. Uh, my salespeople need a specific type of training. My HR people need a specific type of training, etc. cetera. And, and I said, yes, you're right. When we look at the next le level of information and knowledge, right? But the base thing, the, 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 the foundation is, how do I communicate to get across what I need, want to do so that the other person that I need on side gets it and we can have 
common ground, come to an agreement. Yeah, it's about it's about all the hours lost to misunderstandings, misinformation, checking, following up, opportunities. And I'm saying this because it's not his fault, it's not anyone's fault, because we're not taught to think like this, we're not taught to do it. We we we, we kind of like push through life and we become siloed and blinkered. I am a this person, I'm a that, you know. But if you can't do the basic fundamentals of communicating effectively, you're not going to get very far or you're not going to be, you're not going to enjoy what you could have enjoyed your fullest life, right? So yeah, there you go. That's my, that's my big mission. My mission really is to share that to communicate brilliantly means that you are known by the right people when there's a problem that you can solve for them. And in fact, if you do it really well, you transition from chasing opportunities to being the only option because you are in a category of one, right? So you move from chasing opportunity to being chosen for things. And more importantly, though, you live a life that doesn't break you because you've built in the structures around what you need and want so that you can do what you're brilliant at. And a last thing just on this point, this is not um, hot air and BS. My whole life has been based on, I'm privileged, being chosen. So I've had opportunity come to me. I've never applied for a job and I've worked with the UN, the BBC, for whoever, multinationals, governments. And it's because they had an issue and I thought, who is the person we can go to? And my name came up. And that's really what I'm doing. I'm passing on what I have done in my life so that other people can have the same options in their life. I love that. And, you know, it's I feel like it's just so easy once you understand the tips and the tools that are at your disposal. And we don't learn this at school. I mean, I think that's one of my biggest pain points is this is so crucial in our just our life success. Doesn't matter the dynamic, doesn't matter the, uh, you know, the relationships. It's you need communication. Communication so is key which I think you know, applies to you and your community, which is really simple. It's like, who gets the money, okay? So think of substitute money for whatever it is that you're after, but say, who gets the money? Is it the person with the brilliant idea? Or is it the person who is a brilliant communicator? And we know that the answer is, it's the person who's the brilliant communicator because they get people on side, they're able to pass on the big picture and the idea and the, oh, you know, the emotion, inspiration, which is the most valuable thing you can pass on when you communicate, by the way, because it's uplifting and it's a catalyst for change. But the, the, the big thing is, I've sat and judged events and competitions where money was up for grabs for startups, for passion projects in the corporate world, for founders. And it's the people who were the brilliant communicators who were chosen every time. And it really hurt me sometimes because it's like, actually, that's a much more valuable thing that this person is doing, but they're not going to get it. And so don't be that person. If you're brilliant at both the idea and the communication, wow, the world is yours. So who gets the money? The brilliant communicator. Well, it has a lot, of, not only money, attention and, you know, community and like, who's the leader? I mean, it becomes so much more than just one deliverable or one achievement. There's going to be a lot of stuff that ripple effect that, uh, you know, you're able to impact. I'm wondering what tools do you kind of use to identify kind of the variables of how bad of a communicator people are? Is there a way that you measure that? So um, I don't tell people, so it's not a case of bad versus good. It's actually you're in competition with yourself. So it's about where are you now and where could you be with specific enablers, right? So yeah. what I do is I benchmark everybody that I work with. We, we have a ground zero and it's really simple, open-ended stuff because I'm interested in how they think. When you ask somebody an open-ended question, not a really rigid, like there's one specific thing that I want from you. When you ask somebody an open-ended question, you immediately can tell whether that person has sorted out what they are the go-to person for because they will point to it. They will see the space that you've left them as an opportunity to fill with what they want you to know, right? As opposed to somebody who is an answer person who will say the answer. And uh, the... Mm, the, the most challenging layer for me is when people just rattle off PR spiel. Now, I'm not having a go at the PR folk or the comms uh, professionals, no. What I mean right. is that the context is not 
passed on, which is these are our key messages. This is stuff that's really important to our company. However, this is the stakeholder that we need a yes from. So we need buy in. It could be a regulator to pass something, a client, um, a big corporate budget, whatever that thing is. How are we going to get the buy in that we need and pass on these key bits of information? But the buy in is the priority. So it's the perspective of the stakeholder that dominates, not the perspective of the person doing the ask or sharing information, say it's a pitch, a presentation, or something in a meeting. And I'll tell you something, the number one issue that I've had with the people that I've interviewed over my decades, and I mean, um, I stopped counting when I got to 10,000, 10,000 people that I've interacted with in work, is their perspective dominated. So it's about my company, my product, what I do, how I can do something, as opposed to, ah, oh, you know, people in your industry have this issue did you know that if you did that, then you get this back? You know, it, it's perspective. You need your perspective because that's why you're doing it. So you need to distill it and get it out of you onto a piece of paper or figure it out. But then you need to park your perspective and dive into the perspective, which is the pain of the stakeholder you need a, a yes from, and you want to transition them from their pain to their pleasure state, which is pain free, yeah? So to answer your question specifically, for me, the biggest tell is how somebody answers a very generic, open-ended question, and it could be something as simple as, what do you do? So if you fill that space with lots of words and things, and it's confusing, so everyone doesn't actually tell me, okay, what I do is I'm the go-to person to make you known in your field, which means that you will become more financially successful, you become more um, authoritative, have more credibility so you become known in your field for your brilliance and you do that by transforming the way you think write and speak you become the brilliant communicator in your field and then you transition to the brilliant communicator i.e somebody in a category of one that nobody can compete with Incredible. I love this. I love this because more people need this and we need schools that teach this. And I feel that every single human on this planet needs these skills so that they can be better and do better and be presented better in everything that they do and all different facets of their, their life, you know? So I, I applaud you and, do, and doing this. And I have a feeling in your book that's coming out, give me a little teaser. Are you talking about how to do it in these effective ways? Yeah. So the book, um, is built on three pillars. So it's build, share, elevate. So the first one is why should you care about this? Why should you bother? And that it's not your fault. So it's going through the unique opportunity because of the times we live in, AI being a dominant thing, etc. You know, I believe in okay, utilize AI, but don't lose your career and your job because you depend on it, one, because it can never do the nuance that you as a human do. And don't ignore it because somebody else using it will dominate. You see, so it's about how does all this wonderful tech stuff fit in to enabling you? And why does this make a fantastic opportunity? It makes it an opportunity because you need to lean into being human, which includes the nuance, the context of communication, all the stuff that non-humans can't do. All right. So that's, that's it. built. Why? Care, why should you bother? What's the opportunity? Share. That's the nuts and bolts, the, the building blocks. Think of them as Lego building blocks. The building blocks are the same every time you want to communicate, but what you put in the building block is different depending on who it is that you want to share something with, who it is you want to ask something for, right? So a client is going to be different to a regulator, it's going to be different to your teenage child, right? But the building blocks are the same. And then elevate is how do you get to a category of one? So you transition from chasing to being chosen from the brilliant communicator to the brilliant communicator. Nobody can touch you. Awesome. I love this, Nima. This is good stuff. This is why we got this title of the show, The Brilliant Communication with Finesse, because you're bringing that finesse to the stage. You're bringing it to people. And, and I love to close our show with just three tips that you think everyone should know when they are communicating. What do you got? Mm, three tips. All right. So first of all, what is the one thing you want everybody to remember when they've forgotten everything, right? So it's a huge ask, uh, an expectation to think that people are going to hang on every word, they're not. What's the one thing you want people to remember if they forget everything? 
define it, define it, and then anchor everything around it. Start with it, end with it, that's your anchor, one. Two, what are you the go-to person for? Have you sorted that out? It's a huge thing for so many people. You know, just yesterday I had another person who's very intelligent, very capable, really struggling with this. And in fact, I find the more brilliant you are at many things, the more difficult it is to define it. So what are you the go-to person for? Make that at the center again of everything that you're doing so that people know, oh yeah, you equal that. I, Nima equals communication. You, Rachel, equal enabling businesses, right? So what is that equals? And the third thing is close the loop. Every time you communicate, it's a huge opportunity, right? It's an opportunity to connect with somebody, connect with them beyond the moment. So for example, I have, oh, by the way, I have a wait list for my book, right? So I'm going to point to it right now. If you go to the brilliantcommunicator.com, you will see that it's a wait list for my upcoming book. And I'm closing my loop by doing this because it means that people who are interested in it will go to the website, will click and fill in their details so that they get to know when the book's coming out and the bonuses that go with it and that sort of thing. If you are communicating that golden opportunity of space and time with people, but you don't close the loop and point to something, you've lost that opportunity because it's transient. If you close the loop, right? point to the thing that you want them to do, make it easy. You've got them in your community and you've got the right people because it's not about getting lots of people. It's about having connection, direct contact with the right people for you. Those are my three top tips. I love that. I love that. So at least everyone that's listening today, don't lose another opportunity of connecting and closing that loop and keeping people inside your close-knit network whether it be your community where you're pro providing value and communicating that value so it's clear. So the minute you walk away from that conversation, if someone was to ask, what do they do? It is clear for them to understand, repeat, and really remember. So I love that, Nima. You have been so helpful. I really, really love what you're doing. I applaud you. Congratulations on the build of your book. I can't wait to read it. And for anyone listening, now you can find her online and check out the link below. We're back here next Tuesday for another great session about how to drive human connections. And there's so many different ways to do it. Make sure you're doing it effectively. And thanks again, Nima, for joining us today. See you again. Bye.